No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Who needs five-on-five goals to win a hockey game? The Winnipeg Jets certainly don't. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. For all those joining us live this evening on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, both from Winnipeg and the Southern Bureau of Illegal Curve here in Frankfort, Kentucky, and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show. With Dave Manuk, I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here to talk about tonight's Winnipeg Jets 4-2 victory on home ice against the Vancouver Canucks, ending of the Jets' three-game losing streak, putting an end to the Canucks' seven-game road winning streak, and putting smiles on the faces of those who were inside yet another sold-out downtown Winnipeg Arena. Dave Manuk, good to see you on this Thursday evening. Winnipeg Jets get a much-needed victory after having lost those three games in a row. Yeah, I saw Mark Shapley's dad in between the first, the second period and the intermission as I was wa- leaving to come home, of course, to get ready for the post-game show. He had a big smile on his face, of course, with his son having a, scored two goals already at that point, and maybe he knew something. Maybe he had an inkling that Mark Shapley was on the was going to score his his uh, seventh career hat trick later on in the third period, but. Um, you know what, Drew? It was uh, you know the, you can fans can now freely attend Jets games again. It was a sellout crowd, and you thought, well, I mean, they sold it out, but so far the preceding three sellouts haven't gone well for Winnipeg. But the Jets win a, a sellout game, so it all is well in Jets land. And and you know you have to start, of course, with the opening ceremony honoring um, Sam Gagne and his south one thousandth game. Still not easy for me to say, apparently, but. Um, I thought the Jets did a really nice job uh, with the ceremony. I thought they honored Sam Gagne, who obviously has played the majority of his his NHL career elsewhere outside of Winnipeg. But now the third 1,000 games uh, ceremony the Jets have hosted, obviously for Paul Stasny, Blake Wheeler, and now Sam Gagne. And I thought it was very nicely done. I thought they had, it was nice having his family out there. I thought it was nice the way both teams, you know, of course he played for the Vancouver Canucks. And the way uh, both teams and the coaching staffs all honored him in that regard. So um, extremely nice ceremony. And, uh, you know, it was nice seeing him, you know, that I didn't know if they showed it on the broadcast, but uh, there was a ton of um, folks wearing like they had the cutouts of the Sam Gagne and all his different uniforms up against the glass during warm up. So there was a lot of fun with it. And obviously the players were all wearing Sam Gagne hats. I mean, um, um, T-shirts in advance of during the warm up, uh, you know, warm up soccer game i should say so no look the it was it was a nice ceremony and you didn't know how it was going to go for the winnipeg jets and of course got off to a bit of an inauspicious start um in the the opening period of the of the game and we'll get into that in a second but you know um like i said i I like the way the jets put on that that ceremony and and it was nice to wait to see him be honored the way he was and uh you know the crowd the crowd was responsive and you could tell it was a celebratory uh evening of course much like we've seen uh, this Jets club do at least the last four or five, six games. I mean, they just, they're not there to start a game. And I mean, you know, from a literal perspective in the sense that these teams are scoring against them, but also they're not, they're not possessing the puck and they're not getting any shots on net. So you're watching these games and you're thinking to yourself, like, what are the Jets doing? Like they didn't have a shot till the 10 minute and 39 second mark of this. And, and, and that shot, was as loose a definition as a shot as you've ever seen because it was going, you know, 10 feet over Colin Delia. And in fact, it was interesting because they put it on the board and Mike McIntyre, the free press, who sits just two seats over from us, he he says, oh, they got a shot. And then I looked and I'm like, actually, Mike, so he tweeted out, I'm like, actually, they don't have a shot. They just took it off the the board. So I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense because it really wasn't going to be a shot on that. He just stopped it with his glove which obviously wouldn't necessarily necessitate a, a shot. And then one second later, they put it back on as a shot. So even that first shot didn't necessarily qualify as one. And, and look, the Jets weren't, even though the ceremony was nice, they weren't ready to go uh, to start. And that Dylan Sandberg pizza, of course, Drew, and we'll get into that with the ba- wait, game re- game recap, that that certainly didn't start things off for the Jets. And you kind of had a, oh, God, here, here they go again. And, you know, such a tough um, situation, of course, because like I said, you want – you know, they want to get the crowd into it. The crowd's excited. 
nice weather and they're looking and like you said in the thing and i didn't realize it either until i i someone uh, told me that it had been seven games in a row that the Canucks had been hot. They've been, I think Mike was talking about it. And just that idea of how good a road team they've been, because of course the Canucks have been terrible all season long. And then all of a sudden they've ripped off seven straight wins on the road. And of course folks here in Winnipeg know what the Jets have done. So the Jets needed to arrest their uh, slide today. There was no question about it. They absolutely had to pick up a win. Today was a critical, again, not a season defining win, but it was certainly two points that the Jets needed to put in the bank. Well, you're absolutely right because you have a game that's going on right now. I think the Wild and the Stars are still playing each other, or at least they were earlier, and I'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. what the score is right now. Um, but you know, you know that the Wild were inching closer to the Jets and had the Wild. I think the, the Stars. Stars were up four two. The Stars were up four two. I think when I oh, last checked, but I haven't checked. Uh, sorry, Stars won four one. Okay, so there you go. So it's important for the you know so the Stars, uh, you know, st- stay in first place in the Central Division. The Jets keep pace with Dallas, and then they take that space again, and they and they increase the space between them and the and the Minnesota Wild after the Wild win on Tuesday. The Jet, you don't want a three game losing streak to to snowball, and I know you don't need to deep analysis uh, to figure out why that's the case, why it's always better to win than it is to lose. But the Jets, you know, you, you knew that their schedule. After after tonight, they go on the road to Edmonton. Then they come home to face Calgary. Uh, and you, you knew that the, you know, the game against Vancouver is the easiest of the games that were going to be on the upcoming uh, portion uh, uh, of the schedule. They have Vancouver tonight, of course. They have Vancouver a week from Sunday as well um, to finish off that, that homestand, if I'm not mistaken. I know they have Calgary on that homestand in Tampa. And you have Vancouver. So you want to, you know, you don't want that, that that losing streak to continue to snowball. You don't want that to become any more than what it already has been. So it's important to take care uh, of the win tonight. And that first period, as Dave mentioned, that's just not a good first period for the Jets. They're not ready to start the game. And that's even, you know, if you take away, you know, take the Dylan Sandberg free pizza out of the picture, that's still not how you want to start the game, not getting a shot on goal uh, until the latter half of the, of the first period. That's just not the way you can start a game against an opponent. That's not respecting an opponent. But then from then on, they got so much better and they got so much better in that second period and that third period because had it not been for uh, Colin Delia making a number of, of tremendous saves, we think about the save off uh, of, uh, Kyle Connor, of course, on the breakaway, the save off Dylan DeMello, it's probably a 4-1 game or a 5-1 game, and it doesn't even get to clo- be uh, an empty net opportunity for the Jets. But they stuck with it, and they didn't panic after they got sort of that fluky, oh, here are the bells, let the bells ring. Okay, there's the bells. It's 11 o'clock Eastern time is what the bells are telling us, 10 o'clock Central. But uh, what I was saying that after the fluky goal that Connor Garland scores, and we'll get into it, of course, in the Betway game recap, they, they stuck with it. It's not like they panicked. They didn't, there was no panic in their game at all, which is what you want to see in that situation. And they're without Josh Morrissey at that point, because Morrissey and the, the health of Morrissey is probably the big takeaway from the end of this game, Dave. Oh, well, there's no question about it. And it's one of those, I mean, Tyler Myers, where did you learn to hit? You never hit when you were wearing a Winnipeg Jets uh, uh, uniform, but certainly he looked yeah, like he was. But he could score for the Jets. I, I, I don't know. You yes. were probably still in the arena. Dan no, Robertson, I heard, I heard you heard 50, it. Dan, yeah, 59 games. That's an incredible stat that, that, that Tyler Myers has now gone 59 games without scoring a goal for the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, this is a guy who was an offensive player when he was a member of the Winnipeg Jets. That was what his strong suit was. And he somehow managed to go, you know, uh, uh, a Dylan a Dylan DeMello-esque length of time without scoring a goal. Uh, obviously, that was a bad contract the day it was signed. Uh, I think everyone knew that, but I did not realize that his slump was as significant as yeah. it is until Dan Robertson said that on the broadcast. Hey, Dylan DeMello was the TSN turning point. His his phantom penalty uh, in the second period. We'll get into that, obviously, when we get rolling. Let's give a shout-out to uh, Dark Moon's girlfriend, Jamie, in Carmen, Manitoba, home of Eddie the Eagle Belfour, and potentially, uh, you know, his girlfriend as well. So, hello, Jamie uh, in Carmen. Hopefully, you're watching us. And uh, Comet's giving you a shout-out as well. Uh, Maul is saying the clock has more and better insight than Ezzy. We agree, especially when Ezzy's <laughs> God knows how many drinks in in uh, in Mexico right now. We don't yeah. even know what he's talking about. So uh, 
I, we'll I, see. Somebody asked, somebody asked if he was flying on Sunwing, and I really don't know the answer. But <laughs> it, would it surprise you in the least if he was flying on Sunwing and we don't see him? For I mean, he's supposed to do the post game show with you I was on gonna Saturday. Say, don't be so glib, Drew. I'm supposed to be doing that. I'm doing Saturday solo uh, right now, the morning show and potentially the post game show. So it may be a uh, Dave Manuk experience for everyone in the uh, in the chat. We'll see about that, of course. But hey. There, you know, we could have some fun. We're uh, we'll, we'll end 2022 with uh, some of my closest uh, friends here are online. So let's roll like that. I don't mind uh, if that's what we end up having to do. But for right now, the plan is, of course, for Ezzy to. Oh, Dark Moon says she's right beside you. Well, then, hello, Jamie and Dark Moon. Although, why do we not know Dark Moon's name? That's okay. I mean, Dark Moon's anonymous, but Jamie, we we assume yeah. that's not a pseudonym. He just outed Jamie. We, ass yeah. we assume Jamie is her real name. But, uh, maybe <laughs> Actually, it's that's not. her pseudonym. That's a good one, Drew. But yeah. anyway, so look, uh, the, yeah, getting back to your original question, I mean, the 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 the, the situation with Josh Morrissey, of course, is uh, disconcerting to say the least. And we won't. The Jets are supposed to practice tomorrow. Uh, there was some commentary that there may not. They may choose to skip it and instead just head directly to Edmonton. And so we'll have to wait uh, till obviously the morning skate on Saturday to find out uh, exactly what is happening with Josh Morrissey. If of course they don't have, um, uh, if they don't have anything tomorrow, we'll find that out of course in the morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's a, it's a bad situation potentially. And, you know, it was similar to what we saw in the last game where Josh Morrissey left the ice, shook off there. He was shaking off his arm. And in this situation, of course, I didn't see it because it happened in the third period. So I was home. So I was uh, subject to what the broadcast was showing. And sure enough, um, you didn't get in any sort of insight as to all we saw was, okay, he's back on the bench, didn't take a shift. He looked like he was still in a bit of pain, though. He was on the bench, kind of looked a little bit not 100%. And right. then, of course, went back to the room and didn't take another shift for the rest of the game. Most likely precautionary, of course, because like you're, you have a lead. You don't really want to risk it. You can't afford to risk losing Josh Morris. He's been your best defenseman uh, by a mile uh, the entire season. So uh, you don't want to do anything that's going to cause him any damage. Uh, so I'm not I'm not shocked that they maybe wanted to, you know, I mean, I'm sure that was his call ultimately, obviously, because he was back on the bench, right? Well, but. It's, the, it's the C word that you're most afraid of. I mean, it didn't seem like there was anything immediately that would be a, a, a physical injury, but it's the C word when you're sort of... Uh, I was going to say a different C word, Drew. Okay, well, I mean, the, the C word I'm saying... Bailey's, is, Bailey's in the chat, so I won't... I won't that's right. You, you behave, exactly. You behave and you mind your mouth there. I know how like he, how you like to look blue uh, there, Mr. Minot. He's wearing blue. You don't have to work blue. Uh, there you go. That's that's the first thing that comes to mind is sort of an unsuspecting hit when he sort of looks up and it's... Uh, and he went, and it's no, there's nothing dirty about it. Don't get me wrong. No, it's, no. it's a perfectly clean play. Yeah. You just, you're worried about the, the brain and everything else. And you obviously hope that it's not that, but uh, uh, we'll, as we find out things, if we find out things, we'll of course uh, let everyone know here on the post game show or tomorrow, if there's an update, it'll be on illegalcurve.com. but we're keeping an eye on things and we're uh, monitoring the situation as, uh, as the expression goes, we say good evening to everyone. Welcome to the illegal curve post game show. Drew, Mandel, Dave Manuk, we're with you on this Thursday evening discussing the Winnipeg Jets, a 4-2 victory over the Vancouver Canucks, Sam Gagne's 1,000th game uh, in, in the NHL. Nice to, that he gets uh, that honor in front of his friends and family, of course, tonight. And I think Bailey's putting some of his quotes in the chat, so uh, the illegal curve intern doing a great job, as she always does. But let's get into the game recap, Dave. The game recap, of course of course, is brought by Betway, one of the most trusted voices in sport betting, both in Canada and all around the world. Betway is the sports betting app that puts you, the customer, at the forefront with a large selection of betting options and sports, as well as strong promotions and fair odds. What are you waiting for? Head on over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. It's not the start that the Winnipeg Jets want. By no means is it the start that the Winnipeg Jets want playing uh, as a team that's had trouble scoring goals recently, given their number of, of regulars who are in the lineup. And it's the start that the Vancouver Canucks want, a team that has won seven in a row on the road entering tonight's game. It's Andre Kuzmenko, his 15th of the year, assist to Elias Pettersson. And it's Dylan Sandberg, what are you doing? Because he just sends a puck up the middle of the ice like you wouldn't do 
uh, you know, in ten year old uh, house league, you would know better than to do that. He makes the mistake, and it ends up behind Connor Hellebuck to give the Canucks the early one nothing lead. Dave. Yeah, I mean, it was a um, it was a it was a pizza. You know, it was a free pizza as former Jets bench boss Claude Noel was fond of saying with. Um, uh, what was his name? It was uh, uh, Johnny Oduya. Yeah. Johnny Oduya giving away all the free pizzas, and uh, Claude Noel was uh, was always happy to talk about those free pizzas. And yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's not a great it, look. It's not a good pass, and it's not a good play to make early in the first period in a situation where you've now lost three games in a row. Your team is reeling. You're down seven regulars, and you really just can't afford to have a lapse because. Vancouver right now is feeling very good about themselves. Now, the only area the Vancouver Canucks are not feeling good about themselves, which the Jets were able to take advantage of, of course, was specialty teams, and, and that's specifically on the penalty kill. But, you know, the truth is that Vancouver Canucks still have some very dangerous weapons, and they are playing better as a collective group. And so you're, you're, you're in a situation where, and we talked to Kevin Woodley when he came on our Saturday show, uh, I can't remember if that was last. They were, I guess it would have been two Saturdays ago, so, yeah. our last Saturday show. And he talked about the Canucks goaltending and how it actually has been, even though it is their third, fourth stringers, they've actually been decent and they've actually stepped up for the Vancouver Canucks. So you're not in a situation where you can just say, well, it's a third string goaltender. They're not a very good team. Well, they're, they're feeling very good. And the team coming in with confidence, yeah. you know, is playing a little bit differently. And, and when you barely – so – there's a couple of things, right? First of all, the Canucks get that early boost. So now they're they're feeling good about themselves. Interestingly enough, courtesy of our friends at Betway, Drew, the Jets were the heavy favorites in this game, which was interesting given the fact that Vancouver had won seven in a row on the road, uh, were came into the game having won three straight games. Jets had lost what? Here's the update on Josh Morrissey, courtesy of Winnipeg Jets head coach Rick Tonus, and tweeted out by many of our colleagues in the media who are there for the post-game press conference. Sure. Uh, Josh Morrissey has suffered a minor lower body injury. He'll be treated Friday, and the hope is that he'll play Saturday in Edmonton. So there we go. Sounds like a best case scenario for the Winnipeg Jets right there is that it is a minor lower body injury for Josh Morrissey. Uh, his status is to be determined for Saturday, but there's some confidence that he'll be able to go on Saturday uh, against the Oilers in Edmonton as the Jets wrap up 2022. So there you have it. Sorry for interrupting, Dave. No, oh, that's all good, Drew. That's the type of breaking news that you always have to inter to interrupt and and and. You know, you did it in a respectful manner. You gave me the old timeout, so I knew what I need. See, you didn't hold your timeout uh, and and lose it. You used it properly, and uh, were able to get a, a good pause for me and get the show rolling. But uh, then again, and we'll talk about injuries uh, after when we come back from break. But uh, you never know. With look, Sacramento Line, it was the next guy up. Now, not so much. So we'll get into that later. But um, you know, the, I think the Jets really needed to have a good start. Because, like I said, you've got a Canucks team that's feeling good about themselves, and you've got a Jets team that, quite frankly, isn't. And you got a Jets team, guys, the Canucks and the, the Canucks organization. It was funny because there were a ton of people from the Canucks organization in the press box. And I was like, what's going on? And then I realized, well, Abbotsford is, of course, here Friday, Saturday to play the Manitoba Moose. And realistically, guys and girls, the Abbotsford Canucks, the Vancouver Canucks, sorry, were playing part of the Manitoba Moose tonight, with the exception, of course, of Connor Hellebuck. But almost all the actually almost everybody on the ice today had worn antlers at one point in their careers. So um, it, it's it's tough for this Jets club because of the composition of the lineup, because of the roster, and we saw a, you know a change up from uh, the, the the top heavy loaded up uh, front end, top end. You know, Kyle Connor, Mark Scheifele, Pierre Luc Dubois. I liked a little bit more balance. I like that because if you don't have that connectivity, then at least. Your, you know that the, that those that trio going, I should say. Then at least you can maybe have Lowry and and Shifley. And I wasn't sure about the move of Lowry to the wing and Mark Shifley at center, but it seems to have worked uh, for this game at least. So an yeah, interesting sort of. I was going to say I agree with you. I thought these lines, uh, as constructed today, were much better than the lines uh, on Tuesday against Minnesota. I like I liked having a little bit more balance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, there's there's still so many regulars out of the lineup, and you're trying to make do, and you're trying to piece it together. But right. uh, definitely, I, I like Shifley and Lowry together 
uh, more than the Shifley, Dubois, Connor sort of super line and then everything sort of uh, uh, a little bit behind that after that. Yeah, no, I agree. And so, I, I, like I said, ultimately, it's a long way of getting to the the idea that you're a Jets club that is fragile and you cannot afford to do what they did. And, and they've done it consistently. And they they really, I mean, that should be the question for, and we, of course, don't know what the questions are to Rick Bonus right now. But um, that, to me, his slow starts. Because now, I mean, it's, it's happened in games and it's happened within games within games. Because if you remember, I, I think it was the Washington game, that second period, the same thing happened. They didn't have a shot for about 10 minutes in that in that first in the second period, in addition to the first period. So these slow starts, either in periods or to start games, I understand, again, the limitations of the lineup, but you're still the home team, and you still have pretty good scoring depth. Now, I will say, the qualifier is, the Jets currently have 29 guys on the roster, because nobody, <laughs> none of these guys are on LTIR. The seven injured guys are just on IR, so they, they still count towards the cap. And the Jets right. are still under the cap. And the Jets, you know, worth noting... Of their 12 forwards, only four make over a million dollars, right? Mark Shifley, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Kyle Connor, and Adam Lowry. The, rem- mm-hmm. the rest don't. I think that is worth putting into perspective because I think sometimes we lose it and we say, well, you know, these guys are all professionals. They are, but that is a big chunk of your lineup to be missing, you know, some big numbers there. And sometimes guys get more money than they should, but regardless of the value, and we don't necessarily we, – we talk about it with Blake Wheeler all the time. You don't necessarily talk about contract value. I think it puts it into perspective a little bit, though, that this Jets club is reeling with injuries. And like we said, now it's seven. So, yeah, a, a tough way to start the game, not an ideal way. And, and, and you know, again, Connor Hellebuck had to be good because there are a couple of instances where it could have been a 2 nothing game, a 3 no, you know, and to me – the way the Jets have been playing, you don't know if two nothing is kind of like enough to like set this team, you know, askew. It, 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 two nothing to, from my perspective, is certainly an uphill climb for this team. I mean, look, they didn't get any goals five on five tonight. They they, they won four two and they won relatively handily, but it was all special teams and of course the penalty shot and and everything else and went into the empty net. So you know this team is not built. You know you hear it's cliche in football, not built to come from from be, to come back from behind. And the Jets right now, as currently constructed, are not built to come back from behind, which made their their start to the game uh, all the more disconcerting as they were struggling to find their skating legs for the first 10 minutes of, of, of that first period. And then they got a lot better and, the, and they got better at the, in the latter half of the first period. And then they got real good in the second period. Cause from the second period on, it was a really one-sided game. I mean, the shots and, and I know shots aren't necessarily always emblematic of, of the flow of the game and everything else. But in this instance, I would say it was the shots after, after 20 minutes were nine, six, in favor of the Vancouver Canucks. And then for the next 40 minutes, the second and the third period, the Jets outshot Vancouver by a margin of 33 to 13. I mean, that is uh, incredible one-sidedness uh, in a game that Vancouver just seems to have collapsed in for the second and the third periods. And we're fortunate to really have a chance to try and tie the game in that third period, thanks to that uh, fluky Connor Garland goal. But the Jets, whatever happened in, in the intermission, and you know, we'll look at, uh, at Twitter in the commercial break and see if anybody alluded to a conversation in the dressing room in that first period. But from the second and the third period, when they came out for the second period, it was a much different team. And it took them a while to get the tying goal. In that in that second period, they had to work through it, and it eventually came at the 13:52 mark of the second period. Mark Shifley on the power play, his 21st assist, Josh Morrissey and Kyle O'Connor, and it's just a tremendous tip. And I love sort of the tips where the puck, the the the, the tip occurs in the slot, and then the puck hits the ice, and then it bounces up and over the goalie, and that's what you saw here from Mark Shifley. You know, sometimes the tips are just sort of redirections that go straight in. This one was a tip that managed to hit the ice and then bounce a uh, uh, call in Delia, which just goes to show you of how good the tip was by Mark Shifley to tie it up and won a perfect shot by Morrissey and a perfect tip by Shifley and the Jets uh, get the equalizer, an all-important equalizer, and take advantage of Vancouver's 32nd ranked power play to give them the three, to give them the one-one tie at that point. Yeah, and and I think I highlighted comment comments uh, comment because I think it's a good comments, one. The Jets comments, killed gotcha. comments <laughs> comment. Yes, because they killed the Morgan Barron penalty in the first period, 
and they kill the Dylan DeMello penalty early in the second period. And those are big kills. And, you know, the Canucks don't come in with a, a significant power play. I don't, I don't think it's a top 15 ranked power play or anything like that, but the reality is they have the man advantage. And if they score that second goal, Drew, as we've talked about, that could have been quite a difference maker for this hockey game. But instead the Jets PK, which has been very good this season, uh, holds them off. And then, you know, it, it's amazing because like I watched the play Dylan DeMello got, you know, the, the call that ended mm-hmm. up resulting in that power play for the Winnipeg Jets. And I mean, it was a questionable uh, penalty. I thought I didn't think it was a, I didn't actually think it was a penalty call, but regardless, I mean, you know, the refs call it. And so the Jets get the power play and you're right. There was some nice movement and what a surprise, you know, Connor Morrissey and Shifley, it seems like automatic and you're right. It's an absolutely beautiful tip. Guy standing in front, which is exactly where you need to be. The Jets had good movement on the power play. They had some really good looks, but ultimately, you know, they did what they needed to do, which is, you know, and I jokingly said to the guys in the press box, I said, well, the Jet refs just gave, wanted to create this, uh, make this a 1-1 game because you knew the way <laughs> their PK was working for or not working in Vancouver, that there yeah. was a very good chance that the Jets were going were gonna to get their equalizer. And they did. And Mark Shifley, I mean, 21 goals at the time, of course, he has a few more after that, but 21 goals on the season. And what's his career high? 29. So Mark Shifley yeah. is, is, you know, much like Josh Morrissey, going to crush his 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 career high and and he's on pace i think for he's nibbling around that 50 goal mark right now and so this is this is exactly what you needed and you, you know i i said it when you are as limited as the jets are this is going to sound as 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 obvious as as obvious can be captain obvious mm-hmm. but you need mark shifley you need uh, pierre luc dubois and you need adam lowry and those three guys i actually thought stepped up significantly and 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 especially, I thought Pierre Luc Dubois tried to, you know, especially in the first period when the Jets didn't look like they had it. I thought he tried to beast mode it a little bit and try and really mm-hmm. kind of bull his bull in a china shop his way through and tried to create some things. So I, I think that if you've got those guys going, even despite the limitations you have with your with your roster overall, as long as those other guys can kind of hold their own, and that's the key, of course. And you didn't like early on. We saw kind of the cycle working and just dying. You know, actually, Anton Fialbi using his speed, but then not doing anything with it, and 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 similar plays in in the zo- in the Canuck zone in the second period, and you're like, well, what exactly are the Jets doing? They're not creating from those dangerous chances. And again, right now, you do not like re- right now. There's nobody who's complaining that the Jets are only going to score power play goals and win games. Nobody's or or a penalty shot goal and win a game. You don't you don't you can't malign it because the reality is. Right now, special teams might be the only way the Jets can score, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because you, A, (laughs) have to take advantage of your opportunities, and B, that's just the reality. That's where the Jets can throw out their their top, you know, three, four, five guys and Mm -hmm. and, and get take advantage of, of a situation because of their elite talent. I'd like to stop the show for a brief moment and acknowledge that Phyllis, who of course is a regular here on the program, sure. at, and it's 10, 15, 10, 20 central time, is going to the gym now. And I just want okay. to pay tribute to Phyllis for doing that. That's impressive. It is 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. I, I don't know how many of us would be uh, possibly going to the gym right now, but I just think I used that to work. I used to work. I used to work out at this time. You used to work out at this time. I'm I'm impressed. That is a well. I would say that a... was back. That was back when I was in school, and I would finish. Sometimes I had some late classes, and right. finish it. Around, I, I, I don't finish, believe that. I, you know what? Actually, in I, school. I I had a good routine. I'd finish class at nine o'clock. I would come okay. back to my place. I'd go to the twenty four hour gym. I'd work out. Come back. I'd start studying at like ten thirty, eleven o'clock, and yeah. I'd watch. I'd watch Phoenix Suns basketball while while studying. It was a great. I had a great routine. Well, I, I never had that routine, as is evident. But I would like to give credit to Phyllis for, uh, you know, f- I don't know if she was at the game tonight or not, but whatever it is, Phyllis, work out extra hard for me. You're getting a well. More importantly, for that. more importantly, I mean, we we appreciate Phyllis still because I'm sure she'll be watching us while she's working out. But yes. I hope she's spreading the word about illegal curve while at the gym and being like, Absolutely. first of all, it should be on the television. Second of all, everybody who's in the gym, all the other hardcores like Phyllis, should be watching the illegal curve post game show. It only makes sense, but I just wanted to apologize for that interruption. I just saw that in the chat out of the corner of my good. eye. 
and Frosty I thought Winnipeg that that was, is Frosty yeah. Winnipeg is working out vicariously through Phyllis. So way to go. Uh, so am I. So am I <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that, 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 that's how I do it. I mean, although I'll be honest, I don't have obviously I don't have a Peloton down here. My Peloton's in Winnipeg, but I do Ooh, miss Peloton. the Peloton. Someone's, I know, someone's, someone's doing, doing well. well. I know I can afford grid park. Uh, I, I can afford grid park parking too, Dave. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, true. I am a, I am a millionaire uh, based on that commercial. Uh, and just for the, everyone else who was asking about the grid park outtake commercial, yes, it's still yes. in the edit. It's still in the editing bay. Uh, so we're not quite ready to release it. We will release it as soon as we can. It's not going to be tonight. You're just going to have to suffer through Dave and I tonight. But the outtakes of the Grid Park commercial will be I'm working available on it. soon. I, just, I got lots going. By the way, big thanks to uh, Stan Scott, who gave a uh, nice... A very generous uh, yeah. amount of money there. Yes, thank you. And, and said, I think Vancouver's kind. power play is currently eighth. So there you go. So they ha- they do have the eighth-ranked power play. So there yeah. you go. I didn't I didn't know that exactly. But you know what? I think the key is... And that, and like I said, that's a key to the game because I, the Jets right now, I'm not saying they couldn't come back from a two nothing, uh, especially if they got power play opportunities themselves. Because as we've talked about, the Vancouver power play not very good. But the reality is that a two nothing game could have been a very different uh, situation for Winnipeg. So there, you've got to credit the Jets' penalty kill for coming up big. Connor Hellebuck, of course, making some stops as he usually does. And at the end of the day. You've got yourselves up. Sorry, back to back to where we were, Drew, which was Mark Shifley tying the game and making it one all. And then it doesn't take much longer. It takes less than two minutes for the Jets to take the lead, a lead that they would have relinquished. It's not the game winning goal, but it's the goal that gives them the that gives them the lead in tonight's game. Uh, and it's Pierre Luc Dubois who goes beast mode, as you were referencing. And Ethan Bear has no other option but to to hook him on a breakaway opportunity, which leads to a penalty shot, an immediate penalty shot is awarded to Pierre Luc Dubois, who swings out to the right and then comes in and just absolutely snipes a shot past Colin Delia and. Then it was just a beautiful play by by Pierre Luc Dubois, guy who's playing with so much confidence uh, so yeah. far this year. It's his seventeenth of the season, and it gives the Jets the all important two one lead. Uh, and it's sort of just you know, it, it, things go from bad to worse for the Vancouver Canucks very quickly in that sequence, as they've been dominated in the second period, but they've been able to sort of tread water. They've been able to hold on to that lead, and then in the span of less than two minutes, the Jets take that two one lead, and it's Dubois. Uh, just with an incredible play. Did I see that you tweeted the stat? And correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. The I Jets did. have had 17. You stole, so this you, does... you stole it from me, Drew. That was going to be I know. my. I was going to come in here and look so smart. Instead, I mean, I appreciate well, you crediting you, me. But go you on. tweeted go it. Ahead. So once you tweeted it, it's out in the. It's out Fair for the boy. public domain. But hopefully, I, everybody I, who follow who's here follows me on Twitter. Just that's saying, right. You should follow Dave. I see Dave. He's the stat man. Uh, you know, you get some interesting tidbits from from Dave Manuk and uh, as he likes to do his on pace for sort of math numbers there. But the Jets have had 17 penalty shots since they've returned to Winnipeg. And this is only their third goal on 17 penalty shots. Correct. Obviously, that doesn't include the shootouts. But no, that no, is a not. that is a horrible percentage. Yes. Uh, that's just an atrociously bad percentage, which is hard to believe because they've got some pretty good uh, pretty good shooters that have come through this uh, this team in the last decade. So don't last. don't ruin it, Drew. I, let's let's go to the chat here. Let's give the chat the option to answer. Okay. I mean, I don't. Maybe you didn't read my tweet all the way down, but maybe did. you did. Maybe you didn't. Okay. So the Jets have had three guys score on seventeen, as Flying Dukes is saying, three out of seventeen. What? But the yeah. reality is. So we know Pierre-Luc Dubois has one of those three goals. Who scored the other two? Now, the clues I will give you, which are very limited, are um, they were sc- one was scored 2016-17 against the Tampa Bay Lightning, mm-hmm. and the other was the year before the 15-16, the very first one in Jets 2.0 history, and that was against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So uh, you've got... 2015, 16, 2016, 17. It's also crazy to think that it's, oh man, KG3, KG3 didn't even hesitate. Now, hopefully that's because KG3 fo- follows me on Twitter, but KG3 knew it. Nikolai Ehlers against Tampa Bay Lightning and Brian Little against the um, Pittsburgh Penguins. So uh, Kenny's water bottle knew li- a Little, so did Winnipeg uh, Chaser, Danica Smith. No, not Little, well, Little Buff. Who's Little Buff? Is that Nikolai no, Ehlers? Brian because Little, he likes Dustin Bufflin. <laughs> Oh, I meant a little buff. That was a new nickname. No, no, not, not Dustin Bufflin. No, there you go. I like Matthew Thompson's answer. Uh, little and Party. No, Adam Party did not score. Ehlers he dangled. Like, he dangled, but he never scored. He did on dangle. A, on a, on a he did dangle. Shot. Yes. Well, Bailey, if you didn't hear the question, you got to go back and listen, which means, see, KG3 following IC Dave pays off. I like it. Exactly. Well done, That's why you- KG3. 
So yes, look, so- it, it, first of all, okay. A couple of things. Um, I sound like Charles Barkley, first of all, but um, <laughs> the, the, um, sorry, I fanboyed for a second. I just thinking about Charles Barkley. I got so excited. But I will say that, oh man, are you kidding? Charles Barkley's like the, no, no, if no. you, I, if, I, I, if I, love, you had, I, I love Chuck, I, I, but I just, yeah, I mean, come very, on, Drew, I, you give me a look. It's like, consciousness. What, no, I mean, Charles Barkley's like, if I, I wouldn't care, I wouldn't care about, literally wouldn't care about meeting anyone except for maybe you. And I'm not joking. Charles Barkley's the one person I'd be like speechless around. I'd be like, I couldn't say anything. Cause I'd be like, Chuck's the best. Like they, they are, I don't even care if you're a basketball fan. Although if you are a basketball fan, hopefully you watch that Mavericks. Uh, Knicks game because that was one of the best endings of a basketball game I've ever watched. Sorry, I'm turning this into the uh, the illegal the, uh, screen basketball yeah, show. Something, but I will say um, the the halftime show, whatever you want to call it, uh, with inside EJ the NBA. inside in, the NBA. No, I know inside the called. NBA, but I'm saying you know they watch it, whatever. But I'm saying EJ, Shaq. I didn't really like Shaq at first, but I like him now. Charles and Kenny the Jet Smith, best show. Doesn't matter. It's the best sports show on television. There's nothing, nothing even close to those guys. And that's the reason why they win the Emmy every single year. Now back to hockey. <laughs> Sorry about the basketball segue. Um, what are we talking about? Oh, the uh, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois and the penalty shot. Sorry, Drew. There's, you're right. This has been say, quite a, did you have a little caffeine this uh, today or anything? No, 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 no. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm jazzed. I'm juiced. People are happy. People are excited. 2022 coming to an end almost. And uh, people are, the chat's bumping right now, but anyways, Pierre-Luc Dubois, I mean, they blew the roof off and I don't know again, what it was like, um, for folks watching it at home. I mean, obviously people are excited, but I don't know if it can convey, and we've got it on our Illegal Curve Instagram if you want to check out what it sounded like inside the building, because of course I videoed it for your benefit, so you can, or on my Twitter, but I don't want to just self-promote myself, Drew, it's all the time. Sometimes Thank it's you. about the brand, Illegal Curve. So anyways, if you go to Illegal Curve on our Instagram, following us, is, of course, you can watch the uh, what, what it sounded like inside the building. And honestly, the place blew up. The roof went nuts or the, the place went nuts and uh, it, it, the sound exploded. And you're right. It was with authority. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty strong uh, move by Pierre-Luc Dubois, nice goal. And it really got the, the, the crowd jazzed up and excited and it changed the tenor of the game. It really did. Suddenly now a, a game, which even in that second period early, the, the Canucks had a little bit of jump, but one, after that, it was just all jets and the jets yeah. just, it went downhill for Vancouver and all it was, it was just perfect for the jets. Oh, and then it got even more perfect before the second period was up again on the power play. And I mean, look, Vancouver's penalty kill is is their Achilles heel. It, it's it, it's just atrocious. Yeah. And it was atrocious when the Jets went into Vancouver a couple Saturdays ago and won, I think it was 5-1, if I recall yeah. correctly, and the Jets had you some do. power play success. And then tonight, they, I mean, look, this is with, uh, again, with uh, Ethan Bear in the box here. Uh, I guess Ethan Bear and Travis Dermott are both in the box. That's the rare four on three power play uh, for the Winnipeg Jets. And it comes in a non overtime situation. Uh, and it's Mark Shifley, his 22nd of the season, his second of the game. It comes with three seconds to go in the second period. Kyle Connor and, of course, Josh Morrissey with the assists. And it's just uh, an absolute killer for Vancouver. They, they've had a lousy second period. Maybe they're going to get out of that second period only trailing, uh, you know, by the one goal instead Shifley you know shoots it through Colin Delia Adam Lowry is providing a tremendous screen in front and you can see that you know Lowry is just so much bigger than Delia in this case and it's 3-1 for the Jets right before the buzzer it's about as great of a period that the Winnipeg Jets want in terms of a bounce back a response period yeah. from what they had in the first period which was lousy they outshoot Vancouver 20 to 7 in the second period they outscore Vancouver 3 nothing in the second and it's 3-1 for the Winnipeg Jets after 40 minutes it's exactly what you need it's exactly the response you're looking for and it's taking an advantage of a weakened opponent you know Vancouver decides they want to get into penalty trouble you know, whether or not all the calls were warranted or not is a separate issue right. entirely. The yep. calls were made and the Jets did what a good team needs to do. And that is take advantage of it and really demoralize an opponent and remind them about how bad their penalty kill is as if Vancouver had forgotten that they have the 32nd ranked penalty kill in the league. Well, I mean, the, the reality is the, the people who should get the assist for that goal were the fans because they're yelling, shoot. I think that was the only reason why Mark Shifley knew that he should shoot. But I mean, joking aside, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, two and a half seconds to go in the, in the second period drew, and it very easily could have been a two, one game. And you know what, if you're Vancouver and you're only down by a goal and, and it's, you know, a power play goal and a penalty shot goal, 
you're thinking, okay, well, this isn't this. We, we're still within the, with within easy striking distance of this game being a tie game. You know, one goal, one goal obviously game. is is not a significant gap. So, just a massive um, play by the Winnipeg Jets to again take advantage of what you've been very good at, which is the power play, and take advantage of what the Canucks have been very bad at, which is the penalty kill. And so, exactly what the Jets needed to do was what they did, which was take advantage. Mark Shifley, his second of the game, 22nd of the season, and he's feeling good. The crowd is feeling great. And you're right. It was a complete reversal of what we saw, even though they didn't, like I said, start off optimally in that second, they managed to, to right the ship. And yeah. suddenly now they're completely in control of that game. And now you've got a three, one lead after 40 minutes and you've got the crowd into the game again, and you've got everybody buzzed. And and the reality again is it's a full house. So it is a good crowd. People are excited and you can feel the, again, that Sam Gagne energy, and they kept uh, flashing to it. And I don't know how much they um, showed on the broadcast, but like they would show, you know, his, his stuff on the, on the ice. They kept highlighting him and putting pictures of him throughout the course of the intermission. So um, it, the crowd was really excited because I think it was the release valve that a lot of Jets fans needed was, and a 3-1 lead is not insurmountable, of course, but it was just kind of like that, Okay, it's it's not good, but this is the game the Jets needed to have. And despite all of the injuries, if they can take the, bring this one home, which of course mm-hmm. was still a question mark, but if they could in fact bring this game home, what it would do for what it did for the the fan base because it was like I said, it was pretty evident for for those of us in the press box. Well, so as you said, the fans were all uh, chanting "shoot" or yelling "shoot." Here's yeah. the tough duck hardest hitting comment. It's Matthew Thompson that's on the screen as he was yelling <laughs> "shooter." shooter so matthew congratulations you've made me laugh which means you win the tonight's tough duck hardest hitting comment wow uh, you can uh, it's something you never know as i said when as he's not here i get arbitrary and ca- arbitrary and capricious that's what i would arbitrary say and capricious that is exactly what my middle name is is both arbitrary and uh capricious so uh matthew send me an email drew at illegalcurve.com or you can slide into my dms at ic drew and we'll hook you up send me your mailing address we'll hook you up with a toque courtesy of our friends at tough duck that's tonight's hardest hitting comment anytime you I think make fun he, of matthew Kenzie. wants to know drew he wants to know is he the first three-time winner i don't know i don't keep track of that sort of stats and if we were a professional operation you think we might but lord knows i think everyone for the record that, for the yeah. record the contest that i run let's just say it's it's it, there's a tight ship yeah, the, there's tight ship on that. Well, again, it's not. This isn't mine. This is Ezzy's contest that I'm filling in the the, the gaps for. And I mean, oh, uh, Matthew you know. saying Drew, you picked him all three times too. <laughs> then look, look at that. Yeah, I, I guess I like your comments, Matthew. In that case, That's a t- you, Drew, as 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 Inbones we trust just said that is a tough duck hat trick. There you go. So you, what you have to do is you have to bring all three hats to uh, a Jets game that where somebody gets a hat trick and you have to throw all three of them on the ice at the same time. <laughs> and then you'll you're you're then you're just I guess. Uh, uh, maximizing your tough duck hat trick. For the record, uh, yeah. hold on. Spencer Sutton's questioning the veracity of our fully randomized uh, contest. And for the record, Spencer, we've never suggested the tough duck hardest hitting comment is randomized in any way, shape, or form. No. In fact, it is com- completely just picked based on, I mean, I would say it's arbitrary, but totally. it's definitely not randomized because the, the IC uh, contest where you can win authentic Jets gear, that, of course, is randomized. This is not. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, there, thank you very much. There is no rhyme or reason to how we decide these things, but in any event, congratulations to Matthew Thompson. Uh, 3-1 for the Jets after 40 minutes. Vancouver makes it close. Comes at the 13-11 mark. It's off a face-off win, and then a bit of a broken play, a bit of a fluky play. Uh, the puck ends up uh, on the stick of Connor Garland after it goes off of Pierre-Luc Dubois' noggin as he's in the right spot to block a shot. Somehow blocks it with his skull, which is never where you want to block a shot <laughs> with it. Ricochets up in the air, off the glass, uh, behind the net, and then from a bad angle as Connor Hellbuck is sliding from his right to his left, Connor Garland banks it in, and all of a sudden the Canucks have some life when they really hadn't had any for the for the third period uh, with six minutes uh, to six minutes to play in that third period, the Canucks are only down by a goal and it really could have been at that point in time, four, one or five, one given the amount of uh, grade a opportunities. We alluded to them before Dylan DeMello gets absolutely mm-hmm. robbed by Colin Delia, Kyle yeah. Connor, who seemed a little bit uh, snake bit uh, tonight and maybe the last yep. couple of games, a little bit snake bit where he's had some golden opportunities, uh, you know, uh, aren't able to get it past uh, Delia who keeps the, the Canucks in it, but it's three, two at this point in time, Dave. 
Yeah, and and again, it's the third period. It's a one goal game, and and things get a little tighter. You think it's a possibility at that point because the Jets know that a the Canucks really have nothing to lose. They're 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 we expect their season. I mean, again, nothing. You never say never, but and they have made a bit of a run. But you know that the Canucks feel good about themselves, right? Especially playing away from from Vancouver right now. I mean, we know the the, the fan base in Vancouver is a little bit rabid and a little bit excitable, and I suspect that. You know, it seems like a lot of chaos is going on in in British Columbia right now. Yeah. So and, away, and, and away, not just at the airport. No, and <laughs> it's a good point, Drew. Not just at the airport. So you've got a situation where they they're they're playing with house money on the road and and feeling good about themselves. And and Connor Garland, a guy who a lot of player people have talked about, even for Winnipeg, as as someone who might be of interesting to folks, you know, as as a, as a pickup for the Winnipeg Jets if the Canucks end up being sellers. Mm-hmm. Is 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 the guy who who's the recipient of that play and, and that goal? And suddenly now you're right. It's a tighter game. It is a three two game, and folks are there's a little bit more nervousness, a little more nervous energy in the building. Yeah, exactly right. And and then in a bizarre sequence, then the game Shifley scores into the empty net. As we all know, it's the hat trick goal, his right. second hat trick of the month, his his twenty third of the season, uh, on pace to of course shatter. He's had thirty eight previously. I think we may have misspoken when we were talking about it. he did have that year where he had thirty eight goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I said twenty nine, yeah. but twenty nine is what he had last year. I think. Last year, exactly. Yeah. That's where we misspoke. Great assist from Adam Lowry, who makes the play, chips the puck out, yeah. chases it down, and then feeds Shifley uh, to for the hat trick goal. And that's exactly what you want to see from the two of them in that instance but before that it's just you can see the, the the miscommunication you know where jt miller has the puck behind the canucks they can't get colin delia out of the net the jet right. do a great job probably spend a good minute to minute 20 uh, uh in the canuck zone where vancouver is unable to get anything yep. moving they're unable to break out and then with i think there was less than a minute to play you see jt miller yelling at colin delia like i have the puck behind the net here yeah. We're in a secure position. You go to the bench and Delia doesn't move. And eventually JT Miller sort of slams his stick mm-hmm. on the crossbar and says, go, yeah. go, go. And yeah. that's what sort of, then they get the breakout out of their zone. It obviously doesn't end up with anything because it quickly goes back into the Canuck zone that leads to the, uh, to the Shifley hat trick goal and the, the four, two goal. But it's yeah. just so bizarre. It's like they, they didn't, they hadn't. It looked like they hadn't practiced about mm-hmm. how to do a, a how to break out of your own zone and how to get the goalie off the ice in sort of a in a in a set play sort of situation as opposed to on the rush. I know it was on the rush, but I mean right. the Jets weren't pressuring JT Miller. It was one of the the Jets were sort of uh, letting well, Miller set up behind the yeah. net, but it was just yeah. an odd sequence and it doesn't really look reflect well on the Vancouver Canucks uh, in, in that instance. It just looked like a team. Uh, you know, you wouldn't have thought they'd won three in a row. You wouldn't have won thought that they'd won seven in a row on the road based right. on that sequence of events. You would have thought that they were the team the Jets played a couple weeks ago where they just, you know, were horrible on home ice. Uh, but anyways, for the Jets' perspective, they're fine to see their opponent a little discombobulated. Uh, and the Jets take it by that 4-2 margin tonight, Dave. Yeah, and look, I, I mean, you got to give Winnipeg credit because I like the fact that they tried to bottle in uh, Vancouver the way they did. And, and they did a great we, job. We, and they did a good job of it. And you're mm-hmm. right for because it was it was with about a minute forty to go in that third period, maybe more actually, maybe it was closer to two minutes. Yeah. And and they really like hemmed them into their own zone, and Vancouver couldn't break out. And they, you're, you, they I mean, clearly the frustration was getting to them as they were, you know, letting each other have it on the ice, which is never necessarily a good sign. <laughs> and you you know, like you said, Drew, you got to you got to credit the Jets for being able to do what they did, which is you know, hold Vancouver from, from creating any pressure in their zone and allowing them to try and get the tying goal. And then eventually you see the effort and, and you've got to credit Adam Lowry for that effort because, mm-hmm. you know, if, if he doesn't score that goal, I mean, it's, it, there's time and it, it's, it's like hockey in a, the time in a hockey game is not as significant, obviously as sometimes in basketball with the 3000 timeouts, but there's still a lot of time left. Right. And instead you see mm-hmm. a guy hustling, his ass off to get to that puck. And sure enough, he puts it over to Mark Shifley and it's selfless. And he sets up Mark Shifley for, as you said, and Mark Shifley now is one back of Connor of Patrick line, which is remarkable given the how few games Patrick line has played relative to everybody else. But Patrick yeah. line, of course has the most 2.0 jets hat tricks with eight Mark Shifley now at seven for his career. Second, as you said, drew of his, of his, of his, and, and you know, that's something that's pretty remarkable, but a jets team that, 
you know, we, we don't, we don't think of a lot of high scoring, particularly, especially early in the season, they weren't scoring a lot of goals, but now the jets from a hat tricks perspective, this is the third most they've ever had as a group with four of in the season. Most was the, the second most was 17, 18 when they had five and in 18, 19 at eight, that was the year that line. I had that like insane November, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so the jets had eight that one year, but uh they, they, I mean, four already, and that's a significant part. We haven't even hit, approached the the midpoint, and the Jets are already at four. So that's that's a pretty significant, especially given the fact that, like we've talked about, you're missing so many regulars from this Jets group. And so, look, from a Jets perspective, that you did exactly what you needed to do. You needed the two points. It was a desperate. You needed to end it. You needed to be able to say that the narrative of the losing streak is over. Mm -hmm. And, and it's one thing we haven't seen this Jets group too. obviously lose more like uh, traditionally they've only lost a couple, but they, you know, lost three for the first time this year, they put a stop to that. And now it's incumbent on them to see if they can try and build on it. I'm like, because right now you've lost, uh, what did they lose? They lost coming into the game. They'd lost three in a row, but they'd also lost four of their last five. Right. Cause they yeah. had that Seattle loss before the Ottawa the Ottawa win on that Tuesday. Yeah. So, you know, it hasn't been a good December. And look, like I just said, you had well, a ton of injuries I mean, so, and you played a well, ton of games. That's what I was going to say. So uh, they, obviously they have one game left. And I think, you know, I think I heard on the broadcast and I might be misquoting. So apologies if, if I am. But they're going to finish the, the month of December at worst, I believe, eight and eight. Right. Which is given the litany of injuries they've had on their roster. Yeah. Given the number of guys who are out of the lineup, especially in the last sort of week to 10 days to two weeks. That's not bad. You're, you're, no. you're treading water. And had you lost tonight, then maybe you're not treading water nearly as well. But you're treading water decently. And when we come back, we'll talk about the injury update that Rick Bonus gave because some guys are getting closer. Some guys have had a setback. But you really have to tread water, like we said, for another couple of weeks. And you got you know the, the schedule. I mean, it's not easy. By, all, by no means no. is a game in Edmonton on Saturday easy and a game against Calgary at home on Tuesday going to be easy. And you got Tampa on Friday, but you got Vancouver again after that. And then you got some teams that are from the East that, uh, well, you, you would hope that you're going to win those games on home ice. But in any event, you know, the month of December quickly wrapping up Saturday, one game left, and the Jets are doing a pretty good job so far of at least keeping their head above water, which had they not pulled off tonight's victory, then you'd really be wondering how, how close your, your, your hand is to hovering over that panic button. When we come back more on the illegal curve post game show brought to you by Betway, we'll touch on some more comments from the dressing room after tonight's game. We'll talk about the injury update. And maybe we'll look ahead a little bit to Saturday night. And New hopefully people listen to in. Darwin hit the like button, Drew. That's right. Hit the like button. Do what Darwin says, folks. Hit the like button. Dave Manuk, Drew Mandel with you. It's uh, Thursday evening, a little bit before uh, quarter to the top of the hour. You're watching the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. We're live on Twitter. We're live on YouTube. We're live on all of our social media platforms. Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, John Stewart, Dennis Miller, Brad Garrett, the biggest acts and all the up-and-comers. They've all made their mark at Rumors Comedy Club, North America's longest-running independent comedy club. Rumors has kept Winnipeg laughing for over 25 years. When was the last time you laughed out loud? Make it a great night out with friends or book your office or birthday party, even a fundraising event at Rumors. Get all the details and dates on upcoming shows at RumorsComedyClub.com. He winds up. Oh, looks like Ezzy took that one right in the choppers. A blistering fast puck hurts like H-E double hockey sticks. That's why I let the pros at Linden Market Dental Center turn my yow into wow. Get your brilliant smile back with state-of-the-art restorative and cosmetic dentistry from real pros. And remember, always wear a mouth guard. Now that's solid on ice advice. Learn more at LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rollies and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit Rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at Rollies.com. Dave, 
my man, why are you in the car already? It's hours until game time. Uh, Drew, it's because I'm stressed out right now, driving around downtown Winnipeg, looking for a parking spot, and I'm not finding one. I've lost Ginsburg. I don't even know where that guy is right now. Dave, haven't I taught you anything? Do what I do. Pre-book your entire month's worth of game day parking with the Grid Park app. It's super easy to use and saves me both time and stress. Well, Drew, I'm not independently wealthy like you are. So I'm sorry that I don't have millions of dollars to pre-book my parking month in advance. What's that going to cost you? $25? How about five bucks? Come on, five dollars? No yep. way. Five bucks. I'm not telling you a lie. And our listeners can get a free park with the new special promo code, Illegal Curve. Guess what? There's more. Come on, there's more, Drew. You're lying to me. What more could there be? Grid Park now has underground parking, so my car can stay warm during the game. So wait a second. Wait a second. All, all the driving around I do, looking for parking, minus 40. You're telling me I could be toasty warm in a car after the hockey game. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Underground parking. Just download the Grid Park app. That's G R Y D Park and use the code Illegal Curve. All one word. You'll park for free your first time. Hi, it's Drew from Illegal Curve here. Selling your home can be stressful, but it wasn't for me. Thanks to my friends at Zapia Group Realty, they made the process so easy. My home sold within 48 hours and with multiple offers. Zapia Group Realty took care of everything with their exquisite customer service and attention to detail. If you want to sell your home for more in less time, get started by talking to Frank and Mauro Zapia of Zapia Group Realty online at zapiagroup.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. Welcome back to the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. Thursday evening, I see things are going very well in the chat. And just to be clear, no, I do not have the authority to give away my in-law's grandfather clock. So nobody is going to win the grandfather clock. No matter how many Tough Duck toques you've won, you cannot. It's not like we're at the uh, at the carnival here where you can trade up your Tough Duck toques for my in-law's grandfather clock. They might notice why that thing that's been chiming every hour on the hour for the last 20 plus years is no longer hanging there uh, and doing its job so just for the record no you can i cannot give away my in-laws grandfather clock nor can anybody in the chat but i do appreciate the suggestion uh drew mandel dave manuka with you on this thursday night talking about the jets it's a 4-2 win over the vancouver canucks on home ice ends the jets three game losing streak puts the jets in position to at least end uh the 2022 portion of their home schedule uh, on a positive note, uh, courtesy of our friend Murata Tesh, Rick Bonus came into the dressing room post game to give Gagne a pat on the back. Of course, Gagne played in his 1,000th NHL game tonight. Uh, Murat asked Rick Bonus about his message. He said, "Quote: This is what Bonus said. How many guys have played a thousand games? Three hundred and something. How many of those guys have gone to the minors and come back?" Not very many of them. A lot of guys have quit or retired or moved on. So you give them a lot of credit for going back to the minors for a couple of stints and still persevering. It's a major tribute to his character and his love of the game. You've got to love that. That is Jets head coach Rick Bonus talking about Sam Gagne. Gagne, of course, feted at tonight's game uh, for playing his 1,000th NHL game in a very nice pre-game uh pre-game uh, ceremony, Dave M. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I agree. I, I, I've i seen so many guys go down to the minors, and, you know, going down to the minors can be uh, can mean a number of different things. Some guys go down to the minors and still act as if they're good teammates. So, um, for example, uh, you know, who comes, who comes to mind for me is uh, Andre Pavlik. Why, I just, I caused Drew to, to leave. Andre Pavlik is is a guy who, you know, a little Pavlicricity, but, you know, he went down to the minors with the Moose when they needed it, but he was obviously sent down. And ultimately, at the end of the day, like, he was a good teammate. You know, he was he was, he was was good to guys down in the minors, but, and he obviously got a chance to go back up to the to the Jets, but I, I, it's not an easy thing to do when you're a guy who's used to playing in the NHL and you played, you know, 
800 games or whatever it was that, that Sam Gagne was sent down. And then you have to go down and play in the minors it, and it could look bleak. And you're right. He ends up uh, trying to reinvent himself and change. And, you know, things went well for him in Detroit last season and the Jets took a chance on him and, uh, and it's paid off so well so far uh, for this Jets club. And he's provided a lot of veteran savvy and, some nights he hasn't he hasn't exactly had it, and sometimes you wonder if his if his there's a necessity to give him a little. What do we call it, Drew? With uh, what's his name? With uh, oh, Drew's waving. Drew's getting in trouble. He's making a little too much noise. No, but, no or maybe no. he's telling telling people not to make noise. But just saying uh, hi to my father in law. Ah, there we go. But is is he going to have like a Sheldon like uh, entrance in the, uh, in the in the chat? Like uh, much like uh, Sheldon would jump in. Was that the first show we ever did, Drew? When your dad jumped in, or was that like? When uh, yeah, that was the that was ooh, there's that. My Drew might want to mute himself or mute his father-in-law with all that all that racket he's making uh, down in Kentucky. But you are in his house, Drew, so I guess he has the right to do whatever he wants. You are his guest. Load management, EKD. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for, or the expression I was looking for. Load management with Sam Gagne. You wonder if they will do something like that. Of course, right now with all the injuries that the Jets have, uh, I wouldn't expect. Something like that. And look, there's a little bit of a nice symmetry here with uh, him playing, obviously played for the Canucks. Would have been probably a little more appropriate if he would have uh, done it up against the Edmonton Oilers, the team, of course, that he was drafted uh, by back in, was it six overall two, in 2007? So <laughs> that's right. Everybody's in the chat is now recognizing that Drew's father-in-law, who hopefully was watching the show in his bedroom <laughs> upstairs in Kentucky, heard people were going after his clock and now he's he's shutting it down. He's He's making sure that that uh, that 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 grandfather clock ain't going nowhere. He was just he was just getting something out of the cabinet, but yes, yeah, he. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's unaware about the conversation about the clock, but uh, the clock okay, is still on the enough. wall, so every, everybody's happy. That would have been really awkward if that had been my opportunity to try and pry the clock off the wall, and then he, that's yeah, it actually be, it actually would be amazing if like you, Drew's father-in-law walks down and he goes, um, "Drew, what exactly are you doing? <laughs> I thought you were doing your show. Why are you removing that? You know." 200 year old clock from that's a family heirloom that's from right. our wall. And, and you're like, well, I have to give it to him. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Maul I, gets I have it. to give it to mall because uh, he won it in the, in our show. So <laughs> as much as I would love to like respect the sanctity of your home, uh, we're going to have to take this with us. You know, here's a funny, this is, has nothing to do with the, and by the way, mall, think- mall is now apologizing for derailing the show. <laughs> Well, yeah, as, and, but as Maul knows, and as anybody who watches the show, it doesn't takes take much. zero to get the show derailed. It really doesn't take a lot to derail the show. Here, this is this one. Here's a random one. It has nothing to do with the Jets, but I think people will like it anyways. It's courtesy of Elliot Friedman. Uh, in the 2022 calendar year, the Coyotes and the Maple Leafs have played four times. Okay. The Coyotes have beaten the Maple Leafs all four times. Oh, they won the today. Tw- they won six three today. They won. They were four, down two one when I when I when yeah. I checked it out. They won four two in, in October seventeenth. They won five four March twelfth, and they won two one back in January. So how about this? That? Is the they, only time it's appropriate on a hot, on a Jets show, Drew, to talk about yeah. the Leafs because you would have. I mean, we got one. We once got uh, yelled at for having um, a Leafs question on a, right. na- of a national guest. So, <laughs> but if you talk about the Leafs losing, I'm sure sh- Steve Spencer's. A little bit mad, but then C-Max happy. So, you know, people are usually ups- uh, not so upset about uh, about this when it's talking about the Leafs and losing. That's, That's right. not necessarily a bad thing. By the way, I had a question, uh, an email actually from uh, from someone today. Actually, we all got it, Drew. I don't know if you saw it, but I don't think I saw it yet. That probably not. But one of our one of our IC guests said, wanted me to know. Thought there was maybe a problem because he had left a comment on the um, iTunes page. And said, but it didn't show up right away. And just a little FYI for those of you who I know, still 250 of you in the chat. So I know you're all going to do this after before 2022 ends. But just because you leave the comment doesn't, it has to get um, approved uh, approved by, by iTunes. I would imagine they are worried about spam. So any comments don't show up right away. They take a few days to show up. But just so you know, we do wait for the, we do appreciate it. So when I saw that, I said, no, don't worry. It probably is this. Sure enough, I went and checked and the comment was there. So if you want to leave a comment on our iTunes talking about how much you love these shows that we spend time doing, then we will uh, happily accept your comment. 
I did not get that email, but uh, I'll check all that. Uh, no, I realized that... it actually. I realized it just went to me. Never mind. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It's, you're, you're, you're just you're hoarding all the emails, but that's okay yeah. in, in yeah. this case. Uh, yeah. Dave, we have a, a unique code word, of course. We do. We, we do. Yes, because you... Uh, you good folks only have a couple more games in which to enter and get your entries in before we well, award really, the one grand prize game. for the month. Yeah, so I guess one more game, uh, you know, where you uh, to award the grand prize for the month of tickets to an upcoming NHL game in True. January. True. So you better be getting your entries in, folks. That's what you need to be worrying about. Alan's got and like 5,000 vo- uh, entries for the record. Does he really? No, not 5,000, but he has like oh, okay. 400. Okay, well, that's a good number of entries. Alan's doing his work. And part of that job is to enter the unique code word that we give away here on the Illegal Curve Post Game Show each and every time. If you're wondering, where do I enter this code word? What are you talking about? Where am I? Who are you people? What am I doing here? <laughs> you go to the show description. And in the show description, you'll see a link to the contest page. Click that link to the contest page. You'll see a whole bunch of ways and a whole bunch of things that you can do to gain entries and additional entries and more entries and bonus entries to be eligible to win some of the great merchandise that we give away here on the show if you can't find it in the show description for whatever reason just go to our website legalcurve.com click basically any article and you'll see a link to the contest page there where you will have the opportunity to enter the unique code word for the illegal curve contest for tonight's show and that unique code word dave manuk is i'm teeing you up dave and you you, i know i was sure well i was trying Unfortunately, I was trying to tweet, Drew, while you did that. So just in case people are thinking, Celebration of Light, is that Hanukkah-themed? That's what and I was wondering. I know. See, and, and that's I thought people might think that, but I am not going to go. I'm not like that, folks. I'm sticking to my guns. If the the unique code word is always going to be tied to the city, province of the um, the team the Jets are playing, yeah. So or state, of course, if they're playing an American team. But So Celebration of Light has nothing to do with Hanukkah. Is Absolutely it a, nothing. Is it a Diwali thing? It is. I don't even know what a Diwali thing is, Drew. You're too well, fancy. Diwali, little, Diwali yeah. is a holiday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I, I thought maybe you're talking about Ronnie. That uh, isn't that. Isn't, what's Ronnie's last name again? That's Dolly Wall. Well, it's very similar, though, is what I'm saying. So, but that's <laughs> that's not what I was saying either, Drew. You're a master the, of race relations, Manu. <laughs> hey, I went to. I I grew up in the North End, Drew. I'm 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 a little bit more involved than you are. Let's put it that way. What but is anyways, celebration of light? Just just get on. Celebration of light, for the record, <laughs> is for those who have spent time in Vancouver know that it used to be called the HSBC fireworks display that is every uh, summer is put on in it. Now I think it's called Honda celebration of light, but I wasn't going to give Honda some sort of free uh, uh, advertising here on the illegal curve hockey show or post game show, I should say. So instead it is just called the celebration of light. And I will say it is one of the best fireworks displays you'll ever see. Countries all come to Vancouver, English Bay and they compete and they put on, it's all to music and it's, it's just insane. And uh, I've gone a number of years and let me tell you, it's, it's honestly, it's incredible. Archangel Fireworks, shout out to the Winnipeg-based company. They represented Canada. In fact, when I was there, they which would have been like, uh, you know, a long time ago, they would have won. They did win, sorry. Beat China, no big deal. And so uh, Celebration of Light is the festival that takes... Oh, yes. There we go. Hang on. This is the last show I'm doing from here, so you better enjoy it, folks. There you go. There we go. I, I, I have no idea what you were talking about with your celebration of light thing, but I hope yeah. other people were. In any event, celebration of light is the unique code word for the illegal. It also looks. Like, it also kind of looks like flight too, right? So unfortunately, it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little deceiving yeah. when you read it. You you read it and you're like celebration flight. Like, are we celebrating as he flying home? Like, what's going on with this one? So celebration of light, uh, folks. I'm sorry, it was a little bit obscure, a little esoteric. But you know what? Hey, you I've been challenged. Drew and Ezzy mocked me for being too easy with the code words. If, and I'm sorry, but with, with the way uh, Frosty, with the way Frosty and Alan and Bailey and everybody in the chat were guessing the code words, I needed to start changing it up. I wasn't going to do something like the seawall or English Bay or any of the very easy, you know, um, Granville Island. Like, come on, folks. I, I, I got to take, I got to change it up a little bit here, make it a little more difficult for you. So, there we go. There is the unique code word. Remember, get that one in. 
and you'll get entries for the next uh, um, game, of course, which is on Saturday when we have a uh, that. And I'm also gonna you're gonna count down New Year's uh, with hopefully Ezzy and I, and you'll get a chance to win. Someone <laughs> someone is gonna win uh, a grand prize that night as well. So we're gonna give away authentic gear that night as well as the grand prize. So there's gonna be two winners on uh, Saturday night. So cool. spend your Saturday night with us. Before Saturday night's winner, though, we have a winner for tonight's uh, post game. Oh yes, show. I guess we actually should give it away. Yes, we should. So, who? Please tell the good people in the audience who the winner of the merchandise contest is for tonight's game. The winner is Tim Park, I believe. So, Tim, hopefully you're there in the chat. Maybe you're not. Maybe you are. Uh, but we. Interestingly we... enough, of course, Tim is the my the, my father in law's name. So I think it's very you know apropos given that we're trying to steal the grandfather clock as well on the show that uh, yeah. Tim Park is the merchandise contest winner. By the way, I will say. And again, one of the highlights for me and you people, everybody, everybody knows you people, everybody knows that in, uh, in this show, because I love the fact that the chat acts independent of what you and I are saying, or you as and I, or whatever, whatever configuration we're running. But right now, for those of you who are listening at home on the podcast later on the, there's currently a negotiation of people yeah. who are currently bidding on the clock and how much they want to <laughs> spend on the clock. And, and somehow Joe from Winnipeg is just uh, given Tim the clock. Although I think Tim just won the uh, the IC merch contest. But hey, maybe Tim also won an I- a clock. Maybe we should give away little IC clocks. I'll talk to our 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 merch guy. Sorry. So Alan, you are right. You do have your own show, and we we enjoy it and we appreciate it. So uh, no, as far as I know, Tim Park has no relation to Grid Park. So uh, we'll we'll have to figure that out. But regardless, congrats to Tim Park. For entering and for all of those of you who have gotten your entries in again two two prizes to give away on saturday and then once what happens on uh, january 1st well most people will be relaxing i'll be working setting up the next contest for you to get all your entries in we started all over again uh and again remember the, the software is pretty adept at figuring out those of you who are repeating so don't unfollow and then follow There'll be plenty of opportunities to get entries yeah. in throughout the course. Like I said, you can go to the website every day. You can retweet us. And I try and add new things almost every day. So there's always opportunities to gain new entries. And of course, yeah. the most important thing and what gets you the most points is uh, submitting the unique code word after these. Oh, I think there we go. Tim Park is in a TH Power Drew. That is Tim Park, I believe. So Tim Park is excited that, that he won. Way to go, Tim. Congratulations on winning the Illegal Curve uh, contest. You've got some authentic jet gear coming your way. There you go. It's everyone's a winner tonight on the show. This has been a very interesting We're all one. winners. And That's we got right. the, and most importantly, we got the grandfather clock twice, folks. Not once, but twice. I'm hey, should we get it Drew, should we get it thrice? We are, we're only like 56 minutes away. Let's 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 roll. <laughs> I, I, I'm not thinking that we should do, that. I should be up till one a.m. Uh, you know, it, it's a nice idea, but I'm thinking that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap out on that idea. I'm gonna be uh, up till one a.m. I know you are, but you're a night owl, and it's past my bedtime. And as everyone knows, I get even grumpier the later these uh, late night shows go uh, from my perspective. So I'm gonna Fair let uh, I'm gonna let Fair you enough. do your work. I'm gonna let everyone else uh, do their thing, and I'm probably gonna go to bed uh, very shortly because it's uh, it's past the time where I turn to a pumpkin. Uh, I won't be here. Of course, on Saturday night, as I have a very early flight Sunday morning and the post game show beginning at 1 a.m. is not conducive uh, for that. Uh, so Although, I Drew, to, Drew, yeah. I will say just just as a quick aside, you may not have a choice. Just be aware if Ginsburg <laughs> pulls some sort of shenanigan. The fact that you still have an Internet connection yeah. may necessitate you joining me for a brief a brief. Although what time would it be? Yeah, would it, would it, would it actually be, start at it 1? Would be 1 a.m. and it would be 1 a.m. here. Drew, just you know, just show your dedication. Show your dedication. <laughs> Everybody, like Larry, saying he'll be up. Everyone's gonna be up. I'll be hosting. Joe, for the record, Joe's asking who's hosting on Saturday. Oh, it's the Dave Manuk show. As of right now, I have a I have a uh, tentative uh, guest. I have to confirm with him tomorrow. Not guest, sorry, co-host or or analyst on the show uh, who will who's been a past guest. Drew, what are you doing? Are you getting the clock right now? No, I'm getting my I'm getting the hat. Oh, okay. Wow. Indiana wow. freaking Joe Mindell right now. This Why is, did you not wear that all show? You know, I didn't even notice that it was behind me. I saw somebody in the chat just say, uh, just now, say, can put you the turn, hat on can before. you turn your, can you turn your camera and at least show the clock? Like is the sure. clock, is the clock like within like range of, of you showing, uh, everyone? 
Yeah, I can walk with the clock. Okay, let's. let's over, Drew's doing a little walk. Drew's doing a little walk. Don't make everybody nauseous here, Drew. Oh, there we go. The clock. Sorry. Man, well, by I the way, if the hold on, hold on one second, Drew. The don't clock, do anything. Just, one second. Stay, stay where, stay where you are. Okay, hold on. Keep going. One second. Keep going. I'm not sure what okay, you're trying to and do. And there we go. <laughs> now, hopefully, we have a screenshot a new, of something. No, you'll see when you'll see eventually. <laughs> I somehow don't think that uh, I, I suspect I'm not going to be allowed to do the show from here anymore. <laughs> Probably not. Wow. See, look, I mean, look at, look at what happens on the illegal curve after dark. Usually this is, you know, we've already, we're no longer live at this point, Drew, when we're descending into madness, but Hey, <laughs> let's just keep this rolling. I think we're, I, we're pretty close Drew. now. We're, we're, you know, even closer to that uh, midnight mark of uh, a third, a third uh, uh, clock striking, uh, you know, top of the hour. The, yeah. Th- a third striking of the clock. Yes. Yeah, so- it's a nice going to have to pass on that. I can record it and just uh, play it constantly for everybody. We'll send a mass email to everybody just with the clock. Try- every hour on the hour, we'll send this. <laughs> Matthew, Thompson, Matthew Thompson is making a good point, Drew. To that effect. <laughs> Matthew Thompson is making a yeah. good point. Hold on, I lost. I lost. I had it up for a second. There we go. Best post game show ever. Worst podcast, however. Yeah, it may be a little chaotic <laughs> for folks who are not necessarily watching our antics. But hey, you know, maybe uh, people. some people still like to listen to the show. I snacku, trust me. I or sn- <laughs> snuka, snuka. Sorry, I said snacku. I'm a little bit hungry, but let me tell you, I'd love yeah, to stretch they- it out for another 53 minutes. I, I don't think Drew's gonna let me do that one. I'd murder you. No, I'm gonna. I, I would murder you. So instead, I'm gonna say thank you to everybody for joining us. If I don't see you on Saturday, I'm gonna wish everybody a happy New Year uh, and all the best for 2023. Or of course, we'll see you very early in 2023 uh, with the uh, post game show after the Jets and the Oilers. But in any event, Dave M will be here holding down the fort all day on Saturday. He's doing a great job while Ezzy and I are yeah, all let's, we, frolicking Drew, just, in, in different. Please countries. talk about my Saturday, Drew. Talk about my Saturday. Come on. Well, Dave says a very busy Saturday, folks. And Dave M, this is how he, this is what he does for you, good people. So on Saturday morning, he's going to do the Illegal Curve Hockey Show live here on our YouTube channel. He's going to do that because he's a man who who goes the extra mile. After that, he's then going to go to the Manitoba Moose game. The Moose, uh, I guess, Abbotsford is that who they're playing on 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 Saturday night or Saturday mm-hmm. evening for the annual New Year's Eve game. So he's going to go Four cover o'clock. the Manitoba Moose game. And he's, Four o'clock. There you go. It's always a four o'clock. It's oh, wait a finish. second. Sorry, Drew. Drew, it as is... a quick aside, before before I before you keep on talking about me, and please just keep going. I believe I actually yes. have tickets to that game to give away. We've already given away the tickets for the Friday game, and this would be my next opportunity to give away. So I can always go on Twitter and do that. But the 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 giveaway machine is still here for the folks, and I'm still trying to stretch us for another fifty one minutes. But <laughs> if you want to go and spend your New Year's with moi, well, technically not with me because I'll be in the press box. <laughs> if you want to be somewhat close to me, but if you want to be in the building and you want to watch the Moose and the Abbotsford Canucks uh, play the second game of their two-game series here in Winnipeg, four tickets. Uh, I can give two and two. I can give away four if you want one. If you want tickets, I see Dave or Dave at IllegalCurve.com. Send me a message. Sorry, Drew. Continue, you so please. Go, if you want, yeah, so Dave is giving away tickets to the Moose game that he's going to attend on on then after the moose game he's gonna hurry home and cover the jets and the edmonton oilers uh, as the jets and the oilers will ring in the new year in uh, the alberta uh, capital and then following that year post game show uh, after the jets and the oilers that's going to start right around about 11 45 p.m central time uh dave will be there i'm not sure if i'll be there i don't think i'll be there we're not sure if ginsburg will be there that depends on flights coming from mexico so Lord knows when we're next going to see Ginsburg. It might be uh, 2024 when we next see Ginsburg. Uh, but uh, somebody will be here on Saturday night slash Sunday morning with Dave because the man knows no other way to be other than completely obsessed and completely at the service of our loyal audience here on the Illegal Curve post-game show and, of course, website, illegalcurve.com. We want to say a big thank you to all the sponsors of the post game show, the Saturday show and the website. They make it a possibility. They make everything we do a possibility. Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club, 
Frost wouldn't have been if it's not already on the screen. Uh, well, it was, it was, but Drew, Drew, it was, but that was like ten. Drew, that was like ten minutes ago. So unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work my way back there. We've, yeah. we've segued a few more times since Frosty Winnipeg was, you know, generous enough to uh, to put it up, post it on there. Oh, you already got it. Wow, Drew, that was well done. All right, I was, I was working my way back, but yes, you got it. There. Well done. <laughs> There you go. Kevin Bozeman at Rumors. Uh, if you don't have New Year's Eve plans, I believe there are still a few tickets left. You can get them online, rumorscomedyclub.com. Our friends at Limited Market Dental Center, Zapia Group Realty, Betway. They're, the, of course, the title spawn of this year illegal curve post game show our friends at tough duck be like matthew thompson get multiple tough duck tubes you never know what you're going to do with all of them boston pizza seagram's ring in the new year safely responsibly and with some products courtesy of our friends at seagram's but emphasis on that safely and responsibly part for of course folks do not get behind the wheel if you're uh, going to be imbibing on saturday night or any night for that matter Rolly's transfer i'm it's unsure if they can transfer you from party to party but maybe check them out they can transfer your piano at the very least uh with or without ginsburg grid park uh if you need a good parking spot they'll take care of you there and of course the keg uh they are a great place if you are looking for a steak dinner or something else for the new year support these fine businesses because of their continued support of illegal curve hockey big thanks to all of you for joining us tonight it was a lot of fun this post game show a lot of the Jets victorious, of course, 4-2 over the Vancouver Canucks. If you haven't already done so, smash the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, leave us feedback, leave us comments, particularly on the iTunes page. We You get bonus entries in the, in the Illegal Curve merchandise contest for doing so. Uh, we're always appreciative of all of you who join us on each and every post-game show. Like I said, if I'm not... If I don't see you on say, I wish you all a happy, happy new year and all the best for 2024. And we'll see you again soon in time for Dave Manuk. I'm your host, Drew Mandel, for the grandfather clock as well. We say good night and good luck. And thanks for watching the Illegal Curve post game show. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel. Follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.